I used to hate praying. I remember when I was a teenager growing up and I would be playing Call of Duty in my room for many hours of the day. And I remember my parents constantly coming into my room to tell me to go pray. And I'd always hit them with the same infamous line. I'm in the middle of a game right now. It's online. I can't pause it. I'll go pray after the game. And unfortunately, nine times out of 10, I did not go pray. And sometimes they'd come back to my room and I would even go to lengths of lying to tell them, yeah, yeah, yeah I prayed. At that age, I hated the idea of stopping something fun, which was playing video games, in order to go do something, which back then I thought was a waste of time and boring, which was go make Wadul and pray. I fast forward to today i haven't missed one single prayer on purpose in the past three years now if you can relate to my teenager self where you're not praying you don't want to pray you don't feel like praying i have some terrible news for you if you were to die in the current state that you're in where you abandoned the prayers where you're not praying you would die as a disbeliever you would enter the hellfire along with the polytheists along with the atheists along with the pagans because the prophet peace and blessings be upon him said between a man and disbelief is abandoning the prayer so the only thing that sets apart a believer from a disbeliever is the prayer so if you abandon the prayer then that's it you're now a disbeliever now, of course i don't want you to even get close to hellfire so in this video i'm gonna expose everything that changed my life and it will change your life as well the first thing you need to do is to stay prayer ready staying prayer ready just means that any moment during the day you can go pray you have no restrictions holding you back which most of the times means you have wudu and you're wearing appropriate clothes for prayer for the wudu part keep a water bottle around you at all times just in case throughout the day you're nowhere near a mosque or you're nowhere near water you have the water bottle to make wudu quickly and also if there's no water nearby at all and you want to make wudu to pray you can use dirt and you can use rocks that counts as will do as well if there's no water nearby second step you need to be wearing appropriate clothes for prayer at all time you cannot be walking around wearing short shorts because now you pray you can't pray the aura from men goes from the belly button all the way down to the knees this has to be covered for your prayer to be accepted if you're gonna wear a regular t-shirt like i'm wearing right now you need to tuck it in before your prayer so when you go to sujud or when you go into roku it won't expose your back and now your prayer is not valid and a third bonus tip is you can keep a prayer mat around using a prayer mat is not an obligatory act to make your prayer count i know a lot of people have this confusion we're like oh there's no prayer mat we can't pray you can pray anywhere on earth as long as it's not the grave or the bathroom. But if you want to make it easier for yourself, you can keep a prayer mat or an extra sweater or an extra t-shirt, something to lay your head down on. That's fine. And it might make it easier for you to pray. Second tip, you need to schedule your days around the prayers, not the other way around. So for me personally, anytime I make plans or anything, I schedule it around the prayers. I know exactly what time every single prayer is at the mosque. Fajr is at 6 a.m. Dohar is at 2 p.m. Asr is at 5.30 p.m. Maghrib is at sunset. And Isha is at 9.20 p.m. I know all the prayers. So I know how to schedule my day. I know when I can go do something. I know when I can't go do something. I see a lot of people make the mistake of, oh, at 1 30 i'm gonna go start this thing that's gonna take me an hour to do okay well now you're gonna miss the prayer the prayer is the most important part of your day that's the first thing that you're gonna be asked about on the day of judgment so schedule out your day and schedule out the prayers put the prayers in first and then start filling in the day third tip when the prayers come do not delay them i know a lot of people use the hadiths where the prophet sallallahu alayhi delayed uh Dohar and he combined it with asr and delayed maghrib and combined it with Aisha. yes this is permissible but it's only if you absolutely have to if you have the time to pray when the prayer comes pray on time do not delay it because you don't know what could go on later maybe something else pops up later now you miss both prayers and plus i know some people who delay all the five prayers until the end of the day so they'll get home from wherever work they've been out all day they'll come home and they'll pray all five prayers right then and there this is super difficult to maintain because now you're praying for like what 30 minutes to an hour at one time instead of just praying like 10 minutes each single time don't make it harder on yourself than it has to be think about it. it's the end of the day you're on low energy you're on low willpower and now there's this huge task of praying all five prayers at the same time this is not a good plan of action when it's time for prayer Pray it on time. Do not delay it if you can. Of course, if you're actually busy with something like, and you have to delay it for a little bit, of course, that's permissible. Allah knows best. But to delay a prayer, just to delay a prayer, there's no point in this. When it's time to pray, go pray. And now the fourth tip, which adds on from the third tip, is to download a prayer app. I know a lot of brothers and sisters who just don't have a prayer app and they don't know what, what time the prayer is. You need to have the prayer app on your phone. So as soon as you get that notification, you go make wudu and you pray. And after a little while, it just become habit. It'll become notification. All right, boom, wudu, boom, pray. It's sort of like the experiment that that one scientist did like with a dog, where every time he was about to feed a dog, he'd ring a bell and he kept doing that kept doing that until one day he just stopped he rang the bell then he didn't feed the dog and the dog was expecting the food it got into that routine it got into that habit of every time the bell rings i eat now for you every time that notification comes you pray and you'll get into the habit of it and now the fifth tip and this is the most important tip and this is the best tip out of all of them you can do the other four tips that i taught you in this video but this fifth one if you don't click with this if you don't resonate with this these other four you're running on willpower this fifth one it'll take you to a whole nother dimension the fifth tip is you need to have a firm grasp of islam you need to truly have conviction that it's the truth you probably don't pray because you lack conviction you lack conviction that islam is the truth if a christian or a
atheist would come debate you, you'd probably lose because you have no information. You have no knowledge on Islam. For example, if you were to ask my teenage girl self what a hadith was, I would have no idea. All I knew was Call of Duty, video games, and other haram things. And I remember when I first found out that we believed in Jesus, I was shocked. I was like, what? What do you mean we believe in Jesus? That's for the Christians. We believe in Muhammad. So how do you expect someone with that little knowledge to pray five times a day? That's unrealistic. The best thing you can do to start praying five times a day is to learn about Islam and let it grow in your heart and get the conviction that it's the truth. Because now me personally, I don't run on discipline. I don't need to be disciplined to, to go pray. I know Islam is the truth. So whatever I'm doing, I stop what I'm doing to go pray. You need discipline when it's something you don't want to do. Me personally now, I'm at the point where I want to go pray. So I no longer need discipline. I'm on a whole nother realm than most of you. And inshallah, you can all get to this point because discipline and willpower, eventually it runs out. Eventually you run out of discipline. You run out of willpower. That, that's just human nature. You need a bigger driving force. You need a higher power helping you. And now a few things that I did that helped me gain knowledge and gain conviction in Islam was this. Go on YouTube and instead of watching entertainment and watching pointless videos that don't help you at all, watch videos of debates. Watch videos of Muslims who are professionals in the debate scene, in the da'wah scene. People like Dr. Zakir Naik, Ahmed Dida, Shamsi from Speaker's Corner. All these people helped me so much to learn about Islam and to learn that it's the truth. Because you learn so much when people debate and you can see who's right and who's wrong. I remember when I was first learning about Islam and getting into it, I was watching all these debates and the Muslim would always win. I'm like, okay, hold on. How is the Muslim always winning? How, how come the Muslim always wins? How come the Christian like never has an answer? The atheist never has an answer? No one else has an answer except for the Muslim. And that helped me learn about Islam and gain conviction in my heart that it's the truth. Another thing you can do is start reading the Quran. How many Muslims are there that have not read the Quran cover to cover? It's crazy to me. You're a Muslim, but you've never read the Quran, which is God's revelation to you. He made it specifically for you and you've never read it cover to cover. You have no idea what's in there. I mean, how, how are you functioning in life? You need to read the Quran cover to cover. If you haven't done that yet, you need to. So what it truly comes down to is you need to seek knowledge. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim. So you need to seek knowledge. And that can be in the form of the debates, reading the Quran, or just studying on your own somewhere online. These are the top three ways you can gain knowledge and learn about Islam. And now if you're looking for a group or a community of Muslims who are trying to better their lives here, and inshallah secure the afterlife as well, I made a free group for Muslims to join. It's going to be the first link in the description below. Click that and join, and we look forward to seeing you there. And also make sure to subscribe to the channel. All we talk about is self-improvement using Islam. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy this one as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.